Toronto has always been a place of opportunity. In 1834, in the spirit of the early settlement, there were 9,000 people and 300 taverns. Soon the city would be making its own. From Norfolk in England came William Goodrum and his brother-in-law, James Wirtz. First they set up a grist mill, and their windmill at the eastern end of what is now downtown was a well-known shipping landmark, 70 feet tall and built with 105,000 bricks. In 1860-61, they dramatically expanded the business and uh, gave us the, the great gray limestone um, building known as the Stone Distillery. It's still the largest and oldest uh, surviving building on site. Um, it was right next to the water, so it was served by ships, and it came at a time when the railway was very new. So it was also served by the Grand Trunk Railway. Uh, suddenly they could produce about two million gallons of uh, whiskey per year. Um, as a result of that, they continued expanding, and if you come to the distillery district, you can walk along Trinity Street, which is the main north-south street, and you go from the gray building, and then you walk up and you look on the west side, you see buildings from the 1860s that produced malt, uh, cooperage, and so on. By the 1870s, Goodrum and Warts was the largest distillery in the world. When the First World War broke out, the distillery turned its hand to producing smokeless gunpowder for the Navy. The buildings would continue bottling whiskey and rum, along with a sideline business of antifreeze, until the 1990s. Nowadays, it's reborn as one of the city's most exciting destinations. The historic cobblestone lanes lead through rugged Victorian industrial architecture, home now to galleries, artist studios, and restaurants. The Goodrums put their wealth to good use. They built Little Trinity Church, headquartered themselves in one of the city's finest buildings, now known as the Flatiron Building, and set up the Bank of Toronto. TD Bank Financial Group traces its history back to the founding of the Bank of Toronto in 1855. It was founded actually by a group of mill owners. And included in the original uh, our bank charter is Goodrum and Warts. Three generations were our presidents um, and directors. James Austin uh, came to Canada as a young man from Northern Ireland. In 1871, he became president of the Dominion Bank. He had the respect of the, the prominent citizens in the city that were creating this bank because they knew that he had a great business mind and that he would be um, the man to help build this new bank. To get away from the smoke in the city in 1866, Austin and his wife moved their young family to Spadina House in what was then the country. The house had been built in 1818 by Dr. William Warren Baldwin, and when he died, his son sold the bulk of the property to James Austin. Well, the Austins occupied this house from 1866 until 1982. So when we did our restoration between 1982 and 1984, a decision was made at that time that rather than represent just one year or one period of time, that we would represent the best of everything. So as we move through the rooms, we actually move through time. that it does kind of follow the history of the city as the city grows up, right from 1818 when the Baldwins first were here to 1982 when the last member of the Austin family moved out. The two banks, Toronto and Dominion, merged to form the Toronto Dominion Bank with its sleek steel and glass, a 19th century style of architecture that dazzled the city. For more information, visit our website on topoftheworld.net.